Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to this uh, live chat. I really hope uh, it's working. Can you please uh, tell me, is it possible? Can you see what's going on? And can you hear what I am uh, saying? Anyone? This is uh, Thomas uh, Leibon, former world champion in, uh, in badminton in 2009 and uh, one of the founders of badminton family for this uh, first ever live stream uh, I did. Um, can anybody tell me if you can listen? Do you can you hear me what I say? From London, hi sir. Um, we are 19 people. That's uh, that's pretty good. Um, yes, we can. That's perfect. Of very very good. If any problems, uh, please let me know in the chat. And um, this uh, this live stream is. Um, it's made from my living room, as you can see. As you might know, uh, most of the world is, uh, is shut down at the moment. So I thought it was uh, a good idea to do this uh, live session uh, for 30, 45 minutes, depending on uh, how eager you are, how many questions you are. Uh, so the purpose of this is actually that you guys ask me some questions. I will do my best to try to, um, to look at, at the live chat. And, uh, and see if I can answer all of the questions or at least um, some of the, the most, uh, the best ones or maybe the funny ones or, or what we can, uh, what you can come up with. So, um, but let's see, I can see that you're already chatting uh, a lot and hi to Indonesia, India, hello. I'm in Denmark, uh, Thomas Leibon here from Badminton Family. Um, so let's see uh, the, Okay, let's just dive into that because um, a person here asked me what the best home exercises uh, could be. And um, as many of you maybe know that we just did a train at home program. We have this thing called Badminton Family Plus where you can, um, you can get access at the moment uh, for free in seven days. And we have tons of training programs and tactical stuff, physical work, podcasts, a lot of great things in there. And we just made a train at home program um, where I, I made here in my living room, I made uh, 13 exercises for you to do that is badminton related. So um, so you can check that out. And if you go into uh, to the website called uh, PLUS, I can just write it here, plus.badmintonfamily.com. In there, you can sign up for free for seven days. After these seven days, um, it's two ninety nine a month. But uh, so let's see here. Who do you think will win the Olympics twenty twenty? Well, it might be called twenty twenty one because it is uh, it's uh, sadness that it, uh, it is it is postponed a year. But um, so it's tricky to say what will go on in uh, in one and a half year. But um, if if we stick to uh, the persons at the moment who's on top, of course, uh, my own uh, good friend Victor Axelsen. He is uh, he's playing extremely good at the moment, and uh, Tai Tu Jing uh, also um, playing amazing. So these two players would be some of the favorites for the Olympics if we were to play in the summer. So, but of course, it's tricky to say what will happen in 2021. We also have uh, a guy from uh, Japan called uh, Kento Momota, which will of course be the home favorite for that one. Um, so, uh, tricky one to say, and, um, let's, uh, let me just scroll up a little bit and here, see if I can get some, uh, remember you can use the super chat. Um, if you were to do that, you can, um, you can add a little bit of a, an amount and then your, your, your question will be highlighted at the top. So I won't miss it. That's, uh, that's an, an option you can do. Um, how to improve the deception shots. I love deception shots. And I actually have a racket right here. My uh, new uh, Nano Flare 800 from Yonex. Amazing racket. Um, so the deception shots is, um, is something we have on our YouTube channel as well. We have a lot of these shots. I really, really like them a lot. And I've been working on them for so many years. And uh, one of the most important thing is to make the shot look like you're doing another shot make the opponent lose a step, lose the balance, maybe reach the next one at a lower level. That is uh, that's very important. But what I always um, like to teach my, uh, my small children when I, I'm in the hall uh, training them uh, or another player, that is to go, 
to go, uh, as you can see the angle, you go very close to the shuttle, and just before hitting it, you move back, and then you hit again. And that is very important because you need to have uh, loose fingers. You need to have a loose arm when you're doing this. And um, that's not easy because you, in some cases, come with a lot of speed towards the shuttle, and then uh, you need to stop, be loose, and then do the deception. So it's it's a pretty tricky one. We have so many of these tutorials on our channel where we uh, we focus a lot on this. I'll just move the angle just a little bit so we don't see all the mess we have in the kitchen. Um, so watch all these deceptions, and we have super slow motions. We also have some head cams where you can see what's going on. Okay. Um, so here's another question about what am I, how am I spending my quarantine time? Well, at the moment in Denmark, uh, everything is shut down. All the schools, all the universities, the restaurants, the bars, and all the training facilities around Denmark in all of our sports is totally shut down. So it's it's very very tricky to um, to do anything, and that's all. Of course, why we did this train at home program on Badminton Family Plus, and also is doing this today. So I'm uh, working off all these content that we um, that we 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 did before the quarantine came. We still have uh, have a lot of these uh, things, and we can still work on the tactical lessons and the podcast and the, some of the, these physical exercises. So we're working full time on this to provide you of all of these things online. That's the the good thing about uh, this project is that well everything is online to uh, all of the world. So. At the moment, we're still uh, still trying to to use all that content we have we have been been shooting the last uh, couple of months. But of course, if this continues, we um, we will have to look at creative uh, thinking about how can we get an access to a training hall. I have a few options uh, that we maybe um, are able to do. But for the moment, we just use the content we have already shot, and then we do all these things. So that's that's pretty fun. Um, let's see here. Um, what do we have? A uh, loads of love from India. Hello, India. Love back to you again. Oh, there's a question here from By who's asking if I have tried the new Yonex Astrox 100 CC. I haven't tried it yet. I just received my new Nanoflare 800, which is um, an amazing racket. I haven't been uh, been trying it that much, uh, so I will uh, I will test that more. In a few weeks, I will get uh, some new. Um, New content from uh, from Unix, and that's uh, also the, the the two new models of the Astrox uh, CC. I talked with uh, Victor Axelsen about this one, and he said it's uh, it's an amazing racket, and um, I, I can't wait to uh, to try it out in in the, the training hall. And of course, we will give our our, our review about that one. Uh, hello to Germany. Uh, let's say ooh, there's a lot of questions coming in now. Um, uh, the greatest opponent to face Kento Momota today, in your opinion? Well, we've been talking a little bit about him uh, just before, uh, about him uh, returning um, to Badminton. That's, uh, that's great news. Um, really hope the best for him. And, uh, of course, at the moment, we can't, we can't uh, look past Victor Axelsen, who is really, really playing amazing. And the other day, in, uh, Anna Sensonsen as well, also doing it uh, very, very good. It's always tricky to talk about Cheng Long and uh, Xi Yuki because they are um, <clears throat> their the top level is sometimes uh, really really random and uh, if they come to the Olympics they will be 100% fit and of course they would uh, be able to maybe beat the uh, Momota. Uh, so these four players is uh, is of course someone to look at. Then we have uh, Chu Chen Chin. At the moment, not maybe playing his best, but who knows if um, if he will bounce back. He's also um, been playing good matches against uh, Momota, so uh, a lot of players, and it'll be, be very fun to see Momota coming back uh, when the tournament starts up again in the future. We'll we'll see about that. Um, how to power build my hand? Well, that's a good question. How do we uh, get some more power in all these muscles? Um, we've also done a lot of, uh, of these uh, tutorials here on YouTube. Um, of course, you need to be strong in your muscles, but you also need to be able to rotate with a lot of power. And you can, of course, use the racket at, as I'm doing here, where the muscles, they will work very, very hard. You can do it without a shuttle, shuttle or you can, of course, do it with a shuttle. 
But I have two other tools, and I actually have them right here uh, in back. The first one is a uh, hand weight. This is, um, I don't know if you can see that, that's two kilos. And uh, you can do the same exercises where you rotate around. As you, you can see my muscles, they're really, really working at the moment here. So this is a good tool for um, for strengthening your, your wrist and the forearm rotations down here. So that's, a, that's an option you can do. The other option, if you can get a hold of this tool, this is a, a hand training tool where you need to pressure it together. And you can also see the muscles here, they're really, really working and my hand is working as well. So these two tools, they're very good at getting stronger. Um, so that's, a, that's an idea and that's also some, something you can do at home. If you're stuck at home at the moment, try to really try to build up your muscles with these um, easy tools that, that you can use. Yeah. Um, there's a question here for Xiong Tony. Warm up and cool down is very important, right? Yes, it is extremely important. And um, when I played back in the days, um, around, yeah, I played from 2003 until 2012. Um, we focused, of course, a little bit about this, but uh, what I can see now is uh, some of a lot of these top players, they really, really focus a lot on this for many, many hours before the game and many hours after the game, using different techniques, getting treatment, massage and stretching and all these things so they can be ready the day after to perform at a 100%. So really, really focus a lot on these warm-up exercises to be flexible, to be warm. Also, so you don't have to use maybe 15, 20 minutes to get warm when you get on court. You know that if you do a good warm-up routine, maybe 15 minutes before your training session starts, well, then you're ready to kick ass from uh, the first minute in the training. And like you say, cool down, of course, very important um, after your, your session to do some stretches get something to eat uh, within 30 minutes so your muscles have something to work with. That's that's uh, very important. And um, here it says, an athlete spend how much time and how many exercises to cool down? Um, <clears throat> it's, of I think it's very different. Some of these players, I know that um, Vita Axelsen and, and uh, Anna Santon, and these, these two guys, they, uh, they have they have their own physios around them, very, very close to them, so they can work with them. Of course, it's very tricky for maybe all of you guys who doesn't have these options. So you really need to treat yourself and you need to do all these uh, these stretches. And um, could also be if you have been working a very explosive footwork exercise program that in the end you do maybe five, seven minutes where it's just easy around court just to get some of this... Um, this tighten muscles uh, loosened up a little bit. So use some time on it, especially all these um, these stretches. Just take a little bit of water, guys. Um, <laughs> Hi, coach. Would you teach us teach us how to trick the back facing trick shot by Linden? I am. Uh, I'm. I, I got this question a lot because uh, I'm a bit confused about it. Of course, you can uh, show me something here. Maybe you can hit a link and I can see what you mean. But uh, we made a trick shot about this. And if I'm right, um, the Linden behind the trick shot is either the, the thing where he goes to the back line and, um, and just hit it this way. We made a trick shot about that. Um, I can't remember uh, the name of it. Um, we, we, we're currently uh, shooting a new top 10 uh, trick shot series. We have launched nine of these um, videos you can find them on our channel but we also have the other one uh, which uh, i think that it's the one that you talk about where you're standing in this position rotating around and hitting in this way that is uh, also a shot that we have in the in the new top 10 series uh, on the channel so try to find it or maybe hit me uh, with a with a link if um if you can find that yeah um where is the Babington family founder? I don't know who that is. I am the Babington family founder. Um, me and uh, me and, and Philip is the two persons running these things now and made the, the Babington family plus as well. Uh, let's just see here. Um, 
Why are you stopped playing? Oh, I'm um, I'm too old now. Uh, I stopped my career in 2012 in the Olympics in London. At the time, I were just before turning 35, and I had a lot of injuries. I had my wife and my daughter been traveling around the world for 10 years, and it just felt right to uh, end my career at that point. Um, my family were uh, at London and uh, were together with me when I played my last match against uh, against uh, Xiang Nang and Cao Yun Lai in the quarterfinal. We um, we didn't have a chance. We lost uh, very easy. They were too good for us. And uh, I just thought that this was a very good time for me. I had some operations in my knee and all these things with my family. So that was a good time for me to, to stop playing. And, and after that, that's uh, eight years ago, I've been working with different training projects here in Denmark. I have a lot of camps in Denmark for younger people. I train at different clubs. I have been doing coaching jobs uh, at the under-15 national coach as well. And then I started this badminton family project where I can teach all of you guys all around the world with everything I, I learned when I was a, a small child and growing up in Denmark and working with all the best coaches, playing against the best players all around the world. So. That's my full-time job now, the badminton family, and still coaching in uh, different clubs in Denmark, and I have my training camps as well. So that's um, that's what I'm doing at the moment. Let's see. Um, I have to scroll up. Remember, you can use that super chat function if you if you really want your question to be highlighted at the top because there is a lot of uh, chat going on here. And thanks a lot for that. It's it's really amazing. Uh, I'm in touch with Julian Peterson. Yes, I am in touch with uh, the two girls. Denmark is a very, very small country and all the players, they know each other. And uh, I'm still in contact with these um, two amazing players. Uh, they are living uh, in the northern part of Denmark, um, like four, five hours away in, in the car. So I'm not seeing them, uh, but, I, but sometimes I, I chat with them or, or see them. At a, at a team match or something like that. So, so yes. Uh, I really need to scroll up because I saw a lot of questions. Um, let's see. That was a back facing trick. Um, increase the power. Yes, we talked about that. The cool down. Um, yeah, then. Another person is talking about the head heavy racket. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you refer to a power trainer. Uh, let, let's say that you are. A power trainer is a normal racket, but it's just really, really heavy. So you can still practice all your drives, all your double defense, your backhand, all these things. But it's really, really heavy. So your muscles really need to work extra, extra time here. They really need to be uh, to be strong. So. Try to search online for this uh, this power trainer. I know that Yonex, I know that Forza, Lining, they all have it. Have it. Uh, you can use a squash racket as well uh, if if you don't can get this um, this power trainer. But that's a very very good tool to use. Um, let's, uh, let's see if we can find another one. When you're playing mixed doubles, is it best to go for angle more than hard smashes till you have outmaneuvered your opponent? That's a good question. I, I would think maybe a, a mix between these two things, um, not only in the mixed doubles, I think it's in, in all of the categories, it's extremely important to have variation in your game, in all of your shots. So you don't do the hard smash every time. You don't do the short net um net shot all the times have variation in all of the things you do and when you're teaching uh, when you're learning all these tricks remember that from all corners around um around the court you will you will need to be able to do most shots so from the high forehand you really need to be able to do the straight smash the cross smash deceptive drops the the um, the um, deceptive drop where you move the other way around and the stick smashes all the cuts and it needs to look the same so uh, if you t if you we go back to the question i would say that uh, in the mixed doubles angles are really really important especially if you uh, are a male player uh, doing all the attack uh, towards the, the the woman on the other side but of course the the high smash 
uh, towards the, the upper body, the heart smash in the middle. All of these things are very, very good, but have variation in what you do. That's uh, that's important in, in all of the categories, I, I would say. So um, try different stuff out and, and see what works. Uh, upload some backhand shots. We have a lot of backhand shots. Uh, DC's place, thanks for that. We have a lot of backhand shots on, on our channel. Uh, I, uh, I can say that we are working on uh, a few uh, new ones, but um, it's, uh, it's tricky when you don't, uh, at the moment, have a training hall to go out in. But uh, hopefully it will open up soon. Um, how to do half squats? Because I'm currently struggling trying to reach halfway with falling or going on my toes. Mm, I'm not sure that I understand what a half squat is, but it sounds a little bit about you maybe need to be a little bit more flexible in your body. So that I would suggest to go for a lot of stretches um, because if you can um, if you can reach halfway, I, I would say that you are a little bit tightened in your body, in your hamstrings and your thighs and all these these areas uh, around your um, around your core. So. Uh, do some stretches. Um, we have a lot of stretches on our uh, Babington Family Plus channel. You can you can maybe try out. Uh, remember, seven days for free at the moment, guys. Um, how can I improve the front court game? That is to become more faster and improve the reflex at front of the court. So um, the front of the court is in all of the categories one of the most important areas to be really really good at, and you really need to have patience when you're doing this. You can maybe see some of the, um, the top players when they train. Well, they if they were to do a normal net shot, they would stand in this position to do the net shot for like 200, 400 times just to get it extremely precise. So that's um, that could be some something related to, to the techniques. Um, but you're also saying uh, how you can improve it in, in order to be faster. And that is, of course... Um, something to do with your footwork. You really need to focus a lot on to, to be explosive on court. When you have the split step in the center position, you really need to be low in your legs, have the low gravity so you can push away to the corners when the shuttle comes. So do a lot of shadow working when you um, when you are at the training um, to be more explosive in all these things. And you, of course, need to have the right technique as well. So really try focusing on doing the right uh, movements when we go to the front of the court. Don't use all the, um, the, the what, what can you say, uh, the long steps. It really needs to be explosive. So the small, quick steps towards the corners. Uh, that's that's an, a really, really good uh, thing to do. Another thing I see uh, is um, there's a lot of people when they go to the net and they try to reach for the net for the shuttle, they have the front to the net. So in, in that case, let me just change the angle a little bit. In that case, it would look something like this. So when, when they, uh, they are facing with the front like that, and what I uh, usually uh, teach is that we need to have the side to the net so we can reach further. So we need to stretch this way. You can almost, almost see my racket, how far in front I am now instead of back here. So really try to be um, as long as possible this way when uh, trying to reach for the net. That could also help you uh, go faster towards the shuttle when the shuttle comes up there. I hope you can use that to something. Um, let's move on. Um, explain how you grip the bottom part of your towel grip. Thanks a lot for that, Alexander Lau. I, um, I use the towel grip on my racket, as you can see here. And uh, as you can see, I, um, I wrap it this way in the bottom. So let me just see if I can, I can open, open it up a little bit. Oh, it's tricky that it's glued on. As you can see here in the bottom, when I start putting it on, I, try, um, I start it out like that. And then I move around uh, all the way to, uh, to the ending point. If it's uh, something sometimes here, sometimes a little bit lower down. And when I have done that, I, um, I pull them together like this, push them down and close the end this way. And then I do like this, and then it's all closed in the end. 
that's how I do it. Uh, other people, they just uh, cut it off. So you have uh, the bottom open, but um, I don't know. I, I just like to wrap it uh, like this uh, when I do this uh, on, on my tower grip. Thanks a lot for that. Hi to Vietnam from Denmark here. How to get footwork like Momota. <laughs> If I had the recipe for that, that would be very easy for me just to um, to say to you. He uh, Momota, he's so natural about this. He he just moves so smoothly around, as you of course know, and it's tricky just to say, well, you have to do this, this, and this to um, to be a, a, as good as him. But um, I have a few suggestions. Just uh, bear with me. Um, one of the first exercises I like to do. That is to do shadow work around the court, so no shuttles. And then you have to work at a, a low gravity, even though it's maybe not the most comfortable for you. And then you need to do it extremely slowly, okay? So very, very slow and very smooth, okay? So no explosive movements, no crazy jumps, no out of balance uh, landings. Just really need to be in control, focus on doing the right technique, but at a low pace, okay? So just need to cover the court with all these smooth movements when you go around, almost working like uh, you are Neo from the Matrix, you can say. I can remember my good friend, uh, the former world champion in 97. Maybe you can remember him. He's called uh, Peter Rasmussen. He was a left-handed guy. And um, he said to me that he did this shadow movement where he's moving at a low pace uh, at his in his uh, driveway. And um, he, uh, he just did it every day just to learn your body to move at a lower pace, but still to cover the full court. And he did it for like um, seven, eight minutes without taking a break. So that's a, that, that's a very, very good exercise where you can trick your brain to moving slowly and smooth, but still cover the full badminton court. So that's a good idea um, to do that. That's a, a quick tip um, for that question. Thanks a lot for that. Um, and Prathuman Tanva, maybe I would suggest from India, uh, asked me who was your greatest opponent in your badminton time. That's a um, that's a good question. I think it's um, I think it changed over time uh, because of I of course played so many years. Um, the Chinese. Um, Su Chen and Ma Jin, they were really, really playing good. And then came Xiang Nang, Sao Yun Lai. These two pairs, they were uh, extremely difficult to beat. So that's um, that's one of the pairs. And then we have the other pair, which I maybe have played the most times, and that's uh, Nova Vidianto and Liliana Nazia. Um, this pair, me and uh, Camilla, we played so, so many times. And... Um, I have two uh, matches I would highlight. The, the, one of them is, of course, the World uh, Championship final in, um, in India in 2009. We played them. Uh, we played amazing and we won uh, in, in two straight games. That was, uh, of course, a, a very, very good and big memory for me to, to be part of that. That was, some, that was amazing. But one of the other matches I remember against these two players, that was in uh, Estoa Sanaya in Indonesia. That's uh, Nova and Nazi's uh, home court. We were playing in uh, the semifinals against these two. And um, all of you, you, you might know that um, this arena is, uh, is pretty crazy to play in. A lot of noise, a lot of spectators just uh, shouting towards their local heroes. And um, we won the game 22-20, 22-20. So that was an uh, amazing experience for us at the moment. We um, we really really uh, when we look back at the career, we really have some of these matches as our as our highlights. That was a very very good experience. We couldn't hear what what was going on because there was so so much loud um, in the arena. So um, that was um, that was some of our greatest opponents at, at all times. Um, so thanks a lot for that. Next uh, question. Let's see here. Uh, question from uh, Tiberio Lacomi. How often have you changed your mixed doubles partner before getting to your permanent one that you won the world championship with? Uh, that's a good question. Thanks for that. Um, if, we, if we go back to that, uh, how that, that happened, it was actually a coincidence that me and Camilla, we were put together. I was playing uh, men's doubles mostly at the time. 
uh, with my uh, my partner uh, Peter Stevenson. Um, we were playing a uh, full focus on the men's doubles. I was playing um, with random partners in the mixed doubles. I was playing uh, Julia Holman um, at the moment, and um, I, um, I then then there were some switches in at the national center where um, where me and Camilla we suddenly were uh, were paired up because we were the last one standing. All the other players, they got the uh, new new partners. I think that Julia Holman, she got uh, Martin Lungo as as the partner, and um, Camila was playing a uh, ladies double with uh, Lena Lena Fria. So we were paired up to see if if that would work. And um, I think uh, from from the start when we started playing, we can just see that we were a really really good match. So uh, we 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 were together from two thousand and four until 2012 so that was um, a lot of years when I, where I played with her so um, yeah let's say that was uh, the question for that uh, let's move on um, another person is asking is Kamlesh Barani uh, backhand clear grip and that's also uh, a tutorial we have here on YouTube but it's so tricky to learn the backhand clear um, and it's, it's so tricky to learn the grip because what I do when I do it, I uh, of course have the loose fingers. All the techniques of course need to be in order, but let's just focus on, on the grip. Um, I like to start out with, uh, with a bevel grip. So that's on the small narrow edge on the racket. And when I do the, um, the push with the finger powers and the rotation in the arm and the shoulder, I rotate the grip around, ending up at a, at a thumb grip. Of course, if I hit the shuttle with a clean thumb grip, my shuttle will move all the way to the, to the right, uh, outside of the court. So I start up with the bevel and just slightly changing into a thumb grip using all the power from the thumb when I do my backhand clear. But go in and watch the tutorial. We have many slow motions about this one that uh, I think that will be the best. Okay, so... Um, Let's move on. Another person here says uh, from India. Hi, Nikhil. You and Yul were excellent. The most striking matches. So was your England final. Was it Gail Ems and Nathan Roberts? Would you like to give some insights about that match? Yeah, we can uh, just briefly do that. I actually just saw it uh, the other day. We were um, we were looking at these YouTube videos, me and uh, and my daughter, and uh, we, we find uh, we, we found this match online. And um, it was it was an amazing experience. It was uh, our first ever big championship final, and uh, we suddenly came out of nowhere. We were just uh, recently um, been uh, been Danish champion, and and suddenly our career just exploded from there. And then we reached the final at, at the All England. So it was a huge experience for us to do that, and it's a uh, it's a match I, I think back at. Um, with, uh, with great pride and um, a lot of cheer about that. So that was a, a great experience for me to be in that final. Let me just uh, scroll down a little bit. I will be here. Uh, I'll be here five minutes more, guys. So let me just pick out some of these, all these amazing, uh, amazing uh, questions. Thanks a lot for joining. This is, this is really fun and, uh, and, and a great way to, to share some of these insights. Um, there's a person here who is asking, I'm very bad at net kills. After a smash, I cannot reach the net fast to kill the shuttle, even if it's high. What to do? Um, a good question. Of course, there is uh, a lot of things going on in this question. Um, let me just uh, pinpoint uh, three of these things. The first thing that when you uh, land, uh, when you do the smash, it's important that you have you, you land in a good balance. So if you jump all the way backwards, landing backwards, you are not in the best position to move forward. So really try to do all these power smash, smashes where you know that you can land in a good balance. That's, uh, that's number one. And then there's the movement from the smash towards the net. It's important that you don't take too many steps. Really try to focusing on doing long lunges, long explosive uh, steps towards the, the net. So that's important. After the landing, do long, explosive movements towards the net. And as we talked about just before, when you reach the net, it's important to have the side to the net so you can reach far uh, towards the shuttle. So these things, these um, three things, they are very, very important when you need to go 
uh, to attack the net. Of course, there is also the the shot itself that uh, what should we do when we are in this position where we can kill the, kill the um, kill the net kill the shot at the net. Um, use small quick movements. If you use all the big swings, it will probably go down into the net or maybe outside somewhere uh, on, on the opponent side. So use small explosive uh, hits when you go up, something like this, where you can just hit hit the shot with the finger power. So see if this works for you. So these four uh, tips um, for Abhishek. Thanks a lot for that question. Let me move down the chat a little bit to see uh, some of these last questions before we end this session. Um, still talking about the back-facing trick shot. Only one word. Um, we have been talking about that. Best exercises to improve footwork. I will have to. Uh, I will have to to move you on to our our channel. Look at all our footwork uh, programs at our channel. All. Like I said, sign up to Badminton Family Plus. We have a lot of these things online, seven days for free at the moment, guys. If you uh, if you were to do that, um, where to shop Yonex equipment? I can't say that for sure because it's individual for for each country. I would suggest you uh, you you search online for for Yonex gear in your country, um, different shops in in different countries. So that's uh, that's very hard to say. I don't think that there is this one big international shop where you can do this. Um, give the racket from a legend. Yeah, that may, maybe could be um, a thing we could do at, at our next uh, competition. We just had this thing going on on our Instagram account where one of my old um, Yonix shirts were, were in a competition. So maybe a racket would be the next one for sure. Um, Let's see if we can take one last question. Let's uh, dive into the chat here. Um, <laughs> he had enough of our Lindan trick shots. Yeah, maybe. We have a lot of these uh, small, fun trick shots. Um, let's see if we can find the last one. Yeah, let's, let's, let's take this one from Darren Saw. Have you got a best friend from your time in the national squad? That's a good question. A little bit more personal, but that's uh, that's just fine. When I was playing, um, when we when we traveled around the world, when we were staying at the hotels, um, I didn't stay with my partner Camilla. That would be uh, maybe a little bit weird, but uh, we stayed uh, we stayed together with other partners, and I was staying with uh, Lars uh, Lars Paske. Also, of course, from Denmark, he was playing uh, Jonas Rasmussen, also world champion. So me and uh, Lars, we had a mutual uh, interest. I uh, like all the graphic design. I'm a graphic designer. And uh, and Lars, he is a programmer doing these uh, more nerdy stuff. So um, we have mutual interest and we became uh, very, very close friends. And, and I'm still seeing him and, and his family. Um, so... Uh, of course, Jonas and Lars, they are two very, very good friends uh, friends of mine uh, from, from back in the days. So um, that's the good thing about this. Uh, when, we, when we travel, the, um, the, what can you say, the, the relationship to all the other players, the, all, all the coaches, it gets so, so tight because we use so many hours together. Um, so that's a, that's a very good thing for me to, um, to have brought, brought on from that. So thanks a lot for that question, Darren. Um, how do you improve footwork and what are good tactics for singles? I think maybe we could uh, save these questions for next time. Maybe next weekend I will think about if I if I have time again next weekend to do another of these uh, live sessions. That's um, are you welcome, Darren? <laughs> uh, please answer. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, improve footwork once again. Uh, maybe. Um, Maybe look, again, looking at our, our tutorials we have here on on, uh, on the channel. Like I said, Babylon Family Plus, we have a lot on this. We go in depth with all these things that we can't do on YouTube. We have so many things for you in there. You can you can go in there and, and get seven days for free at the moment, and uh, you can just uh, unsubscribe if you don't like it. But uh, I um, I think you will. So um, I really hope that uh, I really hope that's okay for you, uh, Nitin. The good tactics for single. We have so many tactical lessons in there. You can watch as well. Uh, next seven days free. So, uh, guys, thanks a lot for chatting in. Um, I'm really surprised how many uh, is in here. We are 58 at the, at the moment, 60 people. That's um, that's amazing. And um, 
can you re recommend me towel grip, please? Well, I would go for for the very very um, thin towel grip. I like that the best. If it gets too thick, you won't be able to grab your racket to do all the the changing of of, of all the grips. So uh, a thin uh, towel grip, um, that's a, that's a good idea. So guys, I will um, I will wrap this up now. Thanks a lot for joining in. Amazing question, actually. I um, I I uh, had all these things uh, prepared. I would uh, I, I could have talked about, but uh, that was uh, very easy for me just to um, to treat you uh, to all take all your uh, your chats in there. And like I say, keep watching the channel, keep uh, hitting the small bell so you will get all of our future content here on YouTube. Join us our um, our Facebook channel, Instagram channel, and then check out the Badminton Family Plus. Get a free access. See if it's something you like. If you would like to support us, stay on. We will do uh, podcasts, tactical lessons, tutorials, physical things, a lot of things inside this uh, training platform. But uh, that's it for me. I will get back to uh, editing videos and um, and doing this uh, we can do in, in the quarantine. And I would just like to say to all of you guys, stay safe out there. Stay home, stay safe, as they say. And I really hope that the world will uh, will be back to normal in within a, a few months and we can get back to uh, the training hall and we can see all the tournaments in, in the television. But um, thanks for now, uh, guys, and uh, see you online very, very soon again. Thanks.